Hello, I'm Davo and I am here with Rory, the very same Rory from Rory Rory's Story Cubes. Cubes. Whoa, that's crazy. Hi, welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, I've heard that you can teach me how to play Rory Story Cubes. It is so simple, even a child could teach you. Well, in which case, I'm going to hand it over to you. And I'll be my biggest that child possible. <laughs> that wasn't me just throwing <laughs> yeah. a thinly veiled in song yeah. away. <laughs> okay, so it's really simple to play Rory Story uh -huh. Cubes. The game is made up of uh, nine dice, and each dice has a unique uh, picture on each side. Um, so you've got 54 unique icons in each set, um, and there's different sets for you to choose from. So what you do is you take the cubes, you give them a good shape, and then you're going to roll them out. Uh -huh. And the objective is to make a story that begins with Once Upon a Time, mm -hmm. and you have to somehow link together all nine face-up images. OK. Now, the great thing is um, the icons can mean whatever you want, as long as you can weave them into a complete story. Mm. Would you like to hear a tale? Yeah. OK, let's go. OK. So one of my tips is when I'm telling a story um, is I just look for the first icon that grabs my attention. Um, and then I start with that. And my brain kind of catches up to me as I'm telling the story okay. as well. So um, the kind of parachute icon is the one that kind of grabs my attention. And I'm going to say, uh, once upon a time, there was a retired um, ranger. Um, and he was sitting um, on a park bench observing like a little beetle that was climbing around and, and foraging. And uh, it spoke to him. And it said, hello, kind sir. Oh, OK. Yeah. Can you help me? And the ranger was like, um, OK. <laughs> He's just like, OK. Yeah, this, this happens all the time. <laughs> Another talking beetle. It's like been a long day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's like, that medication is really, really strong. <laughs> um, how can I help you? And he said, the beetle said, well, I'm meant to be a flying beetle, but my lessons aren't really working out that well for me. Oh. And you look like someone who's like spent time in the air. Could you help me? So the man reaches in and he scoops up the beetle really gently, gently into his arm, and he takes him up to the tallest building nearby. Mm. And as they get up, they're windswept, and he's cupping the little beetle in what's, his hands. What's going to happen, Rory? Yeah, no. I'm a bit nervous. I don't know. That's the thing. Oh. I don't even know what's going to happen. Um, and he. While he's holding it, his phone starts to ring. The mm -hmm. ranger, not the beetle. Okay. It would be stupid if beetles carried phones. It would be tiny little phones. And, uh, <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> um, his phone rings, and he gets a call from the, from, uh, the base. And they say, like, um, we need to bring you back in. Your medica There's something wrong with your medication. Mm -hmm. um, it's causing hallucinations. And the beetle says, don't believe them. <laughs> <laughs> I need your help. <laughs> I did warn that, like when I tell stories, they get a little bit surreal. Um, so he said, OK, look, I have to go. But let's meet up tonight. Mm -hmm. Because you know the beetle was actually bringing a sense of life and, and meaning to him. Um, so he went, got his medication checked, came back to the tall building, and the beetle was there waiting for him. Mm. And he, um, oh, OK, so this is the kind of challenge with Rory mm. Strikers, is I'm telling this tale. I've got three icons left. I need to use them, but I need to figure out how they, how they go together. Yeah. Oh, so what happened was this weird kind of contradiction. So he held the beetle and he like let it. He kind of gave him lessons, you know, but running up before he took off, he practiced flapping his wings, mm -hmm. and eventually the beetle was feeling really confident. And as the the sun was rising on a new day, um, and there was like a, a rainbow in the distance because it, it had been oh. kind of you know um, drizzling rain. The beetle flew off. He did it. Yeah, he helped him. Um, and the, at first, the man was the ranger was sad because he was like, he was such a nice beetle, and it kind of gave him a mm -hmm. sense of of purpose. Um, and for a long time, he he wondered what happened to the to the beetle. But at the same time, it inspired him, and he went back to uh, the army base and proposed founding like a flying beetle squadron for the army. Mm. And I'm not going to tell you whether they accepted his idea or not. Oh, well, you can't. You find out a I know. That's, so I like leaving it on a cliffhanger. That was so good. That was amazing. You had a full story arc there. I'm really <laughs> impressed. I'm really impressed.
So, um, you know, when you tell a story with Roy Story Cubes, you can obviously work with the basic set or any of the different sets, and you can even mix them together, as long as we recommend you use nine cubes. And that's so that three help with the beginning, three help with the middle, and three help with the end. You don't have to stick to that exactly, but it's kind of a nice guide to, to follow as you're playing. So would you like to like use a different set, or would you like to mm. mix them together? I think we should probably mix and match, you know. OK. So we've got here Story Cubes Voyages. So these are more about, I, I can tell, Consider these like the Indiana Jones set of story cubes because they're all like about adventure mm. um, and traveling the world as well. Okay, well, in true random style, I'm just going to pick three random. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. And then if we have three from the blue set, yeah. which is actions. Yeah, so these are all like, uh, as the name says on the box, different actions that uh, are represented. And oh. these are really helpful for people who are learning a language or want to practice using a language, they can almost like tell stories or write stories oh, I never in a different that. language. And that means they're bringing in verbs into the, the storytelling as well. Awesome. So let's go one, two, three. OK. And then I think for the final three, let's have them from the base set. Mm -hmm. So one, two, three. OK. There we go. So I'm going to suggest you actually take them and give them all, because I feel like there's something magical about yes. the, the shaking together. Okay. So here it okay. is. Oh, okay. Hmm. Hmm. To remember, look for the first one that grabs your attention. It's the, it's the octopus, okay. really. Okay. Hmm. Once upon a time, there was an octopus, and his name was Ollie. Ollie was a happy octopus because he lived deep under the sea with his friends. He lived under a sea, and his best friend was a starfish called Shirley. Now, Ollie and Shirley one day had this big, giant thing crash down through the ocean waves and land right in the middle of their home. Dun, dun, dun. What was it? said Ollie. I don't know, said Shirley. And she was very worried and she was flapping her little starfish hands. I don't know what they Go have. on. <laughs> um, it was awful. But what, what they had to do was look very closely at the brand new object that had come in. It was a giant can of toothpaste. Because... Uh, I see what you're doing there. A giant can of toothpaste with, on the front of it, a giant white smile. What's this? said Ollie. What's this thing? I don't understand. Um, and Shirley looked at him and was like, oh, it looks it looks like a looks like a, a, a land animal thing. We we don't have these things that you brush. And they had to find the answer to what it was. But it was late at night, so they decided to get a good night's rest. Seven AM in ocean time, they woke up. They decided to go to the one place that they knew someone would know. They went to find Karen, the, the Karen, the sea coral, who lived three, three nautical miles away. After much swimming and swimming and swimming, they finally got to Carol's tent. Okay. So she had a tent because she um, she was a moving coral. Okay. Um, so she she liked to get out and about, and she never wants to stay in one place. They went into her tent, and they said, "Carol," said Ollie. "Carol, what's this thing that's fallen from the sky?" And Shirley said, "Oh, oh, I know what that is. They've been falling everywhere." You should go and you should go and see what's fallen in my backyard," said Shirley. And so they went around the back of the tent. Now I'm scared about what they're going to discover. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure yet what they're going to discover. Um, and they had found they had found a giant 
there was a giant thing in the sky and it was peach colored and a little bit fuzzy and it had bright pink cloth wrapped around it. There, said Carol, that's it. That thing's been there all evening. I don't know what it is. Um, and then suddenly, the, 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 giant, the giant pink splodgy thing got closer and closer and closer and five pink splodgy sea cucumbers came, to, came towards them and what happened then was those five giant pink sea cucumbers picked up the three and it held them close to its eye. And right then, Ollie the octopus and Shirley the starfish knew exactly what that, to what knew what that toothpaste came from. They saw a giant smile on the face of a tiny little girl. Ah, that must be what that's for, said Ollie the octopus, as they fell back into the backyard in a plume of sand. But, more things were falling from the sky. <laughs> what would be next? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh my goodness. I really thought that was going to go dark. Did you? Yeah. Well, uh, the girl was a surprise. It was a nice surprise. You kind of, you brought it back. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I, I find it really difficult to try and just, like, how would I describe a little girl for someone that's never seen, never seen them before? Mm. It was really good. I really enjoyed that. So I, I find it really interesting how, like, you start off down a path mm. and then you start looking at the icons and you're trying and to I'm figure not... out how am I going to take the story and weave these into the, the tale because we tend to pick the easy ones first. Yeah. And that I've, just sets I found us up. That. I found because the actions ones can be quite, um, they can be quite difficult to use. Well, not difficult, but like, it's not as literal as like saying, oh, I can use um, an octopus. Mm -hmm. You're here, it can be falling, it can be, um, you can be going at speed against something, it could be, flying or like there's just so many different things it could be and and you have to change how you tell the story because these tend to focus around things and objects mm. whereas suddenly you have to change and weave it around an action mm. so that also makes you have to kind of think differently about how you're using the icons mm. as well and also pacing yourself as well i found that i'd got to like the middle of the story and i was like oh <laughs> <laughs> oh we've got to go somewhere and do yeah. something um and then we went and met, and met um sharon we have one more quick go. Yes, let's. Okay. Do you want to? You know what? Let's use yeah, let's the same ones. Oh, well, because there's so many. There's over ten million possible combinations in a set of nine cubes. What are the odds that we get the same ones again? Yeah, exactly. Okay, here we go. So, yeah, I'll just tell them. Okay. You okay if I have a go? Of course. Oh, okay. There's two icons that like immediately jump out to me, which is this one here. So Kermit the Crab um, was always frustrated, like living in his little um, aquatic home. He could never reach high enough on the like underwater seashelves to, to reach um, his favorite book because he loved to read. Mm. It was a source of great frustration. So one day he got too much and he sat down and thought about it and said, and thought and he thought and he thought and he said, I need to find a solution to this. Um, so he decided, oh, he hatched a plan. No, oh, oh, I see what you yeah. did there. Um, he went to the cave where Ollie, the octopus. Mm. Yeah, so I love creating stories when you weave in elements oh from the previous one where Ollie, the octopus, lived. And he said, Ollie, can you help me out with this? Um, I'm having real trouble reaching up to myself. I need to find a solution to this. And Ollie said, well, you know, there is um, in Carl's, um, Sharon or Carl? Sharon. So Sharon the starfish and Carol the coral. Carol the coral. So in Carol's backyard, there's been stuff falling out of the sky for, mm. for years. Um, you might find something there. So when he went there, he found can of toothpaste mm. um, and he went this is perfect I can use it like a stool I can climb up and I can reach the whole thing um, so he raced home 
stacked up the, the can and he was able to reach up and he plucked his a book he was planning to read, which was A Tale of Two Cities mm. um, from off the, the shelf. And when he real, as he started reading it, reading it, he realized, eh, this book isn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. After all of it, he's like, ma, I've changed my mind. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. I really liked how you made a, made a narrative there and, and linked the two stories together. That's super I, cool. So I, sometimes uh, the more you play, actually the icons take on like specific meanings to you mm. and your group because there was just one really memorable moment where that icon meant something. Mm. Um, and so like way back when we started with Rory Story Cubes, we had some children playing it. And there's a foot icon in the first, in the original set. And they came up with the name of the Bigfoot Little Toe Detective Agency. Mm -hmm. Completely out That's of the amazing. blue. Yeah, so every time they played and that icon came up, and now even when I play it, mm. it's like, oh, the detective from the Bigfoot Little Toe Detective Agency <laughs> has turned up. And it's like this recurring character who yeah. just keeps appearing. And yeah, that's kind of what's really nice about, again, the more you play it, um, you're kind of drawing on all of your past experience of the stories as mm, well. For sure. And we played with a few sets here. So we've got three of the core mm -hmm. sets, which are sets of nine cubes. Yes. But there's tons of others, aren't there? Yeah, so we, we started bringing out these three cube sets um, representing different themes, but they actually form nine cube sets. So again, if you go online and, and you look for them, you will find both three cube sets, but you also find in some cases like nine cube sets like Fantasia, which gathers together all our kind of fantasy themed sets. It combines Mythic, um, I'm going to forget them all now, Mythic, um, yeah, I've done a blank. Have to put that <laughs> it, com it combines <laughs> lots of lots of different yeah. things. It um, it kind of has a fan fantasy element, a kind of Greek element, mm. and a real kind of uh, medieval is the other one. Oh, well. nice, nice. And you don't even have to. You could just buy a little three pack if you really wanted to, and and roll with that. Uh, but as you said, nine cubes the, is really the magic. Yeah, magic I, I, f I find because it's the way our brains work. It's just enough information for us to process. Mm. Um, if it's more, it's too complex, and I think when it's less, you don't really get that. You don't get to see what's coming because there's this weird thing happening with your brain when you roll the story cubes and you're looking at one icon. Your brain is actually taking in all the other ones, mm. and it's working kind of unconsciously in the background, trying to figure out how to weave them mm. together. Whereas if you only ever stick to three or one at a time, it's really hard to weave that story mm. together because you just don't know what's coming next. Mm. So I find I get a more satisfying story when I roll all nine. Mm. Cool. Well, if you guys at home do want to check them out, that is Rory's Story Cubes. And this is Rory. You've met him now. Yeah. We're all friends. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can you can just give him a Google and basically find find them find them everywhere. Um, we've had a blast. Thank you. We have one more go. Yeah, let's. Okay, here we go.